Hey everybody and welcome to part 7 of assembling your own Ultimaker Original Plus 3D printer. Tonight we're going to start out by doing some alignments and align the Z-stage, the limit switch, use two very technical pieces of paper as a tool. We also need our hex wrench to tighten things up with. So let's get going. Okay. So the first thing we want to do tonight is we want to align this limit switch. That's our goal. We start out by aligning the bed to be horizontal. <clears throat> and then we're going to raise it up and time exactly where the limit switch clicks. See so here it clicking. But first we have a problem and that is that this black cable which was routed after the whole thing was assembled is kind of in the way of the limit switch and it can cause problems if it binds. This cable gets in between and causes the limit switch to rub against it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by loosening this motor and then pushing the cable till it's behind here and get it out of the way. So let's do that now. Don't go too far. Take the back screws and loosen them about four turns, three, four turns. Take the front ones, loosen them about two turns. Now you can see the motor moving. And what that will allow is for me to slip this black wire behind it. So you can see, if you look through there, you can see the black wire moving on the other side of the gear cage. And that's what we want. So now that that's done, we tighten the motor. I'll check the stage motion to make sure it's still engaged. It certainly is. Okay. All right. All right. So now let me show you the result. You can see the black wire is going behind the motor here, and it's way up above the limit switch, not interfering at all. That's what we want. So that's out of the way. Now the next step is to align the bed. We want the bed to be aligned directly so that when the head moves it's always the same height above the bed. Now one piece of advice I'll give you is finger oils on here are not good. Finger oils on the aluminum underneath are not good. So before you get too far into this I suggest you pull the glass off, you clean everything with alcohol or with ammonia or with window cleaner. Clean the aluminum, get all your finger oil off and then from now on only handle it from the edges and from the bottom so that the heated surface does not have finger oils on it. Now bringing it up here just to show you what I mean by a line. If you look down underneath here you can hold the lead screw pretty easily and that will hold the platform at a fixed height. Now what we're going to do is we're going to verify that the head stays the same height above the glass throughout its travel. And that will mean that it can lay down a nice even layer. If it doesn't, then it's going to be crooked and the part's not going to sit straight. So we want to take care of that. And we're going to do it by adjusting these three screws. That's what they're for. They're spring-loaded. And you adjust them clockwise, tightens it and pulls whatever down. Same here, same here. Counterclockwise loosens it and raises it up. So instructions everybody's been saying on the internet is two papers is not tight enough one paper is just right so we tighten this to one paper thickness so I'm going to slide the paper between the extrusion nozzle and lay it across the front here so we can attest the front and go up until the paper just touches and slide it around until you feel it binding and back it off until you can just barely feel it scraping I'm going to run the extrusion head over. And be careful, you can see there it's gotten a little tighter on this side, so I'm going to tank it down a little bit. In the front right now it's really the same here as it is here, just barely touching. So I just had to turn a little bit of the screw to get it to do that, and now we'll try it in the back and see how that's working out for us. Just until it touches. 
and here it's touching just a little bit. And I'll spring the head over. Same thing. So I have gotten it level with just adjusting one screw. Some of you may have to do more. So that's the second step in our alignment process. Now the glass, the plane of the glass is parallel to the plane of the extruder head travel. Now to keep the nozzle the same height above the glass while it builds the part. Let's bring it back down now. Now the third part of tonight's alignment is to set the position of this limit switch. And this is very important because if you put it too high, the glass head will crash into the extruder nozzle. It doesn't break anything, but it's not going to work. If you set it too low, then the first layer of your part isn't going to be touching the glass. It's going to be spacing out and drooping between the nozzle and the glass because it won't be able to raise the platform up high enough for a good solid first layer. So getting the position of this limit switch correct is very important. All right, so now we're going to align the Z-limit switch. So while we raise the head up, I'm going to move this piece of paper around until I feel it start to catch here, right in the middle. Okay, that's good. A little bit down. A little bit more. Down one more. Okay, that's good. Now the way to align the limit switch is you come around here to the back side of it and you push it down until it clicks. So. I'm going to tighten this screw here on the side closest to the inside a little bit. Just where it clicks. Now let's see. Lower it up and raise it down. It's too much. Is it right at the head? Higher. That's perfect. Okay, so what I did is I tightened the screws up so that as I move this piece of paper around here, right as the paper touches the head, the limit switch clicks. That's a really good alignment. Boom. Just starting to feel the paper drag on the head. So at one paper thickness, the limit switch clicks. And that's how you know it's aligned correctly. These are the two limit switch screws here. And after you've already tightened them, you want to come back one more time and give them that last little snug because if that limit switch moves, it's going to mess up your print. There. So it's nice and tight. Recheck it one more time. Paper thick. Okay. You can see, can, can you see it now moving? So it clicks. So click all the way up, boom, right there. I'm just feeling the extrusion head touch the paper on the glass platen. That's what you want. This is the power supply pack for the 3D printer. It's pretty big and it has a connector that plugs in over here. But of course what we want to check is that the on off switch is actually off. Oops, it's on when the one is pushed down like it's shown here. So let's push the zero for off. Now it's off. So next, I'm going to take this connector and it plugs in flat side up like this. So that's plugged in. Now I'm just going to walk around over here, plug in the AC power to the device. We're going to verify that we have a blue light, meaning that this power supply is receiving power from the wall here. And now the cable is coming over here. Hey everybody, welcome back. We ran out of time last time, but it was a crucial moment because we were just about to power up the 3D printer for the first time. So tonight we're going to do that. Um, you'll notice I have all the cables connected. Um, I do not have an SD card inserted if you want to come around here and look. Without a card, it'll say card removed. With a card, it'll say Ultimaker ready. So that's a key distinction. But we don't have a card, it doesn't matter. We're going to just come around over here and turn the power switch on. The first thing you'll notice is the blue screen comes on. There's no letters at first. We give it a few minutes, there we go. That is the normal display success. Card removed, yes we don't have one. So, 
What do you notice here? A couple of temperature indicators. There's the element head, there's the heated bed. The X and Y positions, which are not known yet because it hasn't run the homing position. There's the Z position, also not known yet, so they're all zeros. There can be no percentage of SD card full because there is no card. So everything looks correct. So if you recall, I centered the head back here in the middle and the bed is down. What we're going to do now is we're going to do what's called auto home, which will move the head to this corner in contact with both limit switches and move the bed up in contact with the C stage limit switch. So in order to do that, we have to push this button. You think this button rotates, but it also pushes down. So I'm going to push it down once, and you see there's some choices there. I'm going to drop down one. Right now it's pointed at the info screen, which if we push again will take us back to where we were. We want to go to prepare. So you can see the little carrot is pointed at prepare, and I'll push the button down again, and there's some options. And one of the most obvious ones is auto home. So this is a good little first check to do, see if your limit switches are working, see if everything's coming together. So I'm going to just push the button down, and if you want to take a look, you'll see the printer kick into action. Okay, ready? Back it up. There you go. Right, here it goes. Auto home. Two limit switches have found. Z limit switch it found. And as you'll notice, we spent a lot of time last time getting the alignment of the head right, and I can feel that paper dragging between the nozzle and the glass right there, just like last time. So that means we have a good alignment. The bed is flat. We proved it. So now we're ready to move on to the next part, which is that we will use the Cura software and do a full self-check of the printer. The Ultimaker uses an open source free software to do the really intricate and advanced work. And this software is called Cura 3D. Cura 3D. And if you just type here in the browser Cura Download, like I have here, and you click on this link, it will take you to the download page for the Cura software. And you'll notice here, it knows I'm on a Macintosh, so it has me ready to download Mac OS X version 2.1.2. But just for fun, let's click all versions. And you'll find out something really nice about Cura, which is that it's on Windows, as you see here. It's on Mac, as you see here. And it's on Linux as you see here. So if you can't find what you need with one of those three operating systems they'll probably accommodate you but I think we're pretty well covered with this software for all our operating systems. So I'm going to take the Mac, download for free and since I've already done that and fast forward I've installed it so that I can launch it from my browser down here or my, my toolbar down here so Cura has a nice little C like this and that's the same thing on Windows. So you just click it. And here it is. Now notice, my computer is connected to the Ultimaker printer with a USB cable right now. So when I say over here under machine that I want to add a new machine, it's going to say this wizard will help you in setting up Cura for your new machine or your machine. Add new machine wizard. So we're going to click next here and we're going to tell it that we have an Ultimaker Original Plus. So that's the right choice for the printer we built. I'm going to say next again and it's going to say upgrade Ultimaker firmware. And this is asking us to upgrade the software inside the 3D printer that makes it operate. They call it firmware because it's a little harder than soft. 
and we're going to say over here upgrade firmware so we're saying yes Doki and I'm plugging in the USB cable now. There it is. And now it's uploading the firmware to the printer. Okay. As you can see here it said install firmware. Marlin L2 Maker UMOP 2500.hex. Okay, done with that. So now we're going to move on to the next page. We're going to do an Ultimaker checkup. It's a good idea to do a few sanity checks on your Ultimaker. You, you can skip them. We're not skipping them. So first time. So we're going to run it. It's going to check communication. It's going to check temperature. And it's going to check in stops. And it's going to teach us how to do it. So click run check here. So it's connecting to the machine. It takes a little while, so don't worry. And so what it's doing now is it's heating and it's detecting the heating by monitoring it with the heat sensors. So if the heater's working and the temperature sensor shows it goes up, the temperature is rising, as in heating, then it means both the heater and the sensor are working. So we pass the heat checks. Now back it up a little bit and you'll see that it's asking us to make sure that none of the in stops are pressed. Well we did the auto home so if you want to swing over here in order to make sure none of the stops are pressed I need to move this out and get it away from the limit switches. So none of the end stops are pressed right now. So okay, we did that. And it's, it's noticed we did that. Automatically it has switched to this. Pre, please press the left end stop. And it's showing you in red here what that is. So that's the limit switch on the front. And if you want to come around here and look, you can see that I'm going to press this limit switch. Which I just did. And it says okay. You pressed it. Now it switched us over. Come back over here. Instead of being over here, it wants us to press the Y in stop, which is the limit switch for this direction. And so that limit switch is over here. So I'm going to press it. And I find generally you have to do it twice. It's like it wants to make sure you've got it. And now if you come back here and look, that Z limit switch that we spent so much time adjusting, that's the one that's lit up in red now. And it's back here in the back of the printer, as you well know. So I'm going to press it. Once. That time it worked well. And now we've moved on to the next step. We've already leveled our bed, so I'm going to skip this step and go to finish. So this means that we have completed our self-test. So we did our auto home. We checked the communications, the heaters, and the limit switches. And as far as we know, everything is ready to go for our first print.